Not a bad idea. This all feels pretty good this morning. I just keep that on for a while. <laughs> this gospel this morning from John is one that's pretty profound. Here's Mary coming to Jesus. He loves Mary and her sister Martha and Lazarus, their brother. Lazarus, of course, has been dead for four days. And she is saying to him, I know you have done miracles. Where have you been? We sent for you and you didn't come. Where have you been, Jesus? I know you could do these things. This is the lady whose tears went to his feet, who wiped his feet with her hair. They are deep friends, close friends. And Jesus said, come with me, Mary. Let's go. Let's go to the tomb. But Jesus, you're wasting your time. It's been four days. Could you imagine the smell? Ooh. They did not have embalming in those days, FYI. Four days is a long time after someone has died. Why open the tomb, Jesus? It's been four days. Roll the stone away. Lazarus, come out. But really, Jesus? Really? Yeah. Here's how Jesus felt about it. It's a favorite verse of confirmance because in some versions of the Bible it says Jesus wept. A whole verse with two words. <laughs> Who can't remember the Bible, right? Anybody can do that. One of the reasons it's in Scripture that Jesus wept is because Jesus felt like we feel. He was sent to us so that we couldn't mistake. We were talking a couple weeks ago in our adult study, how do you put God into words? How do you just describe God with a big white beard, with a shepherd's staff, sitting on his throne in heaven? How do you understand God? It's not so easy to put into words when you think deeply and profoundly about it. So God sent Jesus that we would understand who God is, that he would, we would understand how he gets it, what it's like being a person. And not only did Jesus weep, but it said that he was deeply troubled and in sorrow. That's the words that it was using. Uh, deeply troubled. Uh, let's see. Where did that go? He was disturbed in spirit, greatly disturbed in spirit, and deeply moved. Now, this is the point I want to make about being greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. Anybody here ever been around a horse? We used to have horses. I hope some of you have at least seen them at the zoo or somewhere in your life. You've certainly seen them on TV. <laughs> well, once in a while, if a horse has something on his back, like maybe a fly or a mosquito, or if they roll in the dirt, have you ever seen them get up and go like this? And they can shake <laughs> like mad. I mean, these are powerful animals. And a we pastors were talking about it in our study group last week and one of the pastors said she was on a horse recently when he did that and, he, and it's a good thing she was holding on because he just shook her right off. That's how powerful that is. That's what the Greek words refer to and that's why they make you go to seminary for four years to figure this stuff out because it doesn't say that in the Bible, does it? <laughs> it doesn't say that at all. But he shook. The words mean he shook to the core. He was deeply disturbed to his bones, to his toes. This is how Jesus understood what was going on for the sake of Mary, Martha, at the loss of their brother, Lazarus. So when you and I have our hearts ripped in two because someone has died in our lives, Jesus gets it. That's the point of the message today. He gets it. He knows what it means to be in sorrow and in pain from the loss of loved ones. And so I'm standing here on purpose this morning between the beginning of life which happens at the baptismal font and the end of life which we have signified by the lights on the altar today in the continuum, same place you are, the now but not yet, the beginning and the end. We are in the mid times, somewhere on the spectrum of life, each of us. And so on this day, when we have gathered to remember loved ones, I'd like to say a little something about them. These baptisms, the, the three Peterson brothers that were all here recently. And wouldn't you know it, they already moved to Wisconsin. I could just like, doggone it anyway. They're up there near uh, Duluth. But what a day it was when Foster and Curtis and Grant were baptized. And little Cameron James. And J.C. in Jersey whose great-grandma and grandpa are here this morning. Yeah, over back here. And Brantley 
And little Oliver, who just came up for the children's sermon, the youngest one to attend worship this morning, I do believe. <laughs> what a great day. Great days all of those were, as you see them listed in your bulletin. And then we have the other side of life, the spectrum, where Bud, no, no, many of you don't know Bud, but he and Judy were married here a number of years ago. He wasn't an old man in his 50s, but the guys at work called him old man because he was a lot older than most of the rest of them. <laughs> and he had their respect. And there were a number of loved ones who gathered here who don't necessarily find themselves in church very often, but came to hear the word of God. And there was Ruth Davis who was here a lot during her lifetime. Now she'd recently, in the last 15 years, moved to Iowa to be near her son, but for many decades was faithful in this place, serving an altar and in the kitchen and in Bible studies and women's groups and social concerns. And Kathy Warren used to sit over here with Tina. Kathy didn't have all the advantages you and I might have had in this world. Life wasn't easy for Kathy in her marriage or in her life, in her work, in her living or in her dying. Kathy had many struggles and died young as well. And there was Pat Mangler. <laughs> now, Pat was amazing. She did make 100. And she absolutely was a Cubs fan. And I thought for sure, since this is the first year that the Cubs went to the series or were on their way to the series, that maybe she was up there coaching a little bit. <laughs> we give thanks for Pat because she loved being at worship. She loved being in church. She was an amazing woman in that way. And Neil, we said goodbye to Neil. <laughs> and uh, that was way too soon also. Because Neil, if he touched one life in this world, he touched thousands. There are so many stories. We could write books this thick. And the Cooper writers loved their words, didn't they? <laughs> All of them, <laughs> they loved their words. <laughs> But Neil didn't just love words. He took that into action as a man of God. And in many hospitals, many days of the week, you and I were things that we'll never know about. He worked with families in the most difficult, ugly situations you could imagine to find a ray of hope and a little bit of help somewhere. That was Neil. That's what God made him to do. And there was Betty. I didn't get to know Betty very well in her life, but Lori's here this morning, her daughter. And I saw the family that Betty had created, and how they gathered and remembered her life and loved all the cookies and treats and snacks. They loved to gather around food. Who doesn't love to do that? And there was Lois, dear Lois, who used to come across the parking lot, right? The, man, the woman with a memory for history like you can't believe, who had a social passion for the least of these in our midst, and who just had a, a faithfulness about her that was hard to imagine. Lou, of course, her husband died very young. She remained faithful in this congregation up until her very death many years later. Marie Taylor will be missed at the barn service this winter because she was always the first one there and the last one to go. And she had nothing more than a little plastic raincoat and a, and a plastic bonnet while I'm sitting up there with 10 times more than this going, okay, it's time to worship in the barn and it's cold in here, so let's hurry it up. She was the first one there and the last one to go and loved every minute of it. And she didn't shake either. I don't know how she could stay comfortable. She loved the Lord. She loved being in the barn and the connection with life especially her early life. So we'll miss her at the barn service this morning, this Christmas, rather. And there's Sally Edwards, who is my mother-in-law and Nancy's mom. And Sally was a dear, creative lady. Amazing things that she did in her life. Wasn't always the easiest mother-in-law to have, but we loved each other. And in retrospect, I see how much she loved her family and how much she did for them how much she loved life and how God made her as a creative person to express aspects of living in life that couldn't be done in any other way. That was Sally. By the way, she was quite a horse trainer as well. <laughs> there was Frank Dewis who up the street, uh, if we go up the street and turn right past the gas station, you'll see the Dewis Center who was at the high school for many years, who was interested in our physical well-being because guess what? We only have one body and if we don't take care of it, how are we going to have a life, right? He got that. Stewardship, if you will. Think we just had stewardship Sunday? Oh no. Stewardship is every day. And Frank understood that. He was confirmed here. We didn't see him too often after that, but he was confirmed here and his family asked that that be remembered at the time of his death. And we said goodbye to Bob who kept many, many farmers going. 
including the tractor that Nancy and I have because I messed up on that and he showed me what was wrong with it before we started it, thank God, or I probably wouldn't be here this morning because it was locked into gear and I didn't know it. Bob took one look and said, "Uh, uh, uh-uh-uh, Pastor, (laughs) you don't have that right. I shouldn't have been messing in an area that I didn't know anything about, right? (laughs) But many farmers were helped over the decades to keep their tractors running, their equipment tuned up and and in, in going. He was a John Deere specialist and loved those putt-putt tractors. Nobody better than Bob. And he loved Dorothy's Snickerdoodles cookies and I had more than my share of them at their kitchen table. They were really good. And we miss Bob. Indeed we do. And there's Reuben Radons. Reuben was a Wednesday night guy. Loved to worship on Wednesdays. His wife used to run Pavilion. He was a backhoe operator for profiters in town for years. And he also got up at 3 o'clock in the morning with a big stack of newspapers and counted them out for all the newspaper delivery kids. And then after work, he'd come back and collect the funds and make sure all that balanced up. He loved his family and he didn't want to be hungry. He grew up in an era when you would be hungry. You knew what it was like to have a dollar. Leon Reed used to sit in the back row by Gary and Patty back there with Bud. And uh, Leon was a dear woman who loved family, who spoiled them rotten, loved them, but nobody loved more than to go to her house and be with her cooking and her cookies and her treats and her time together and the hours would fly by. She loved people. She cared for uh, this community at the high school. She used to wash the football uniforms by hand and get the mud out. That's before this artificial turf business like they have now, which I don't know why they put that in there. Isn't it a lot more fun to slide around in the mud than it is to play on that stuff? <laughs> but she did it in those days when you had to hand wash those uniforms every week, have them ready for the next week's game, cleaned the school, loved her family in great ways. And there was Wally Arthurs. Pharaoh used to go to his house every month and take him communion. Pastor Leo would visit now and then. Not somebody many of you know either, but a man who always wanted to know what's going on at St. John's, what's happening in church. These are the saints that we're talking about today. These are the people that Jesus Christ unbound from their earthly travails. And, And like Sally had nine years of dementia and there are other stories, right? as our lives move along where our bodies start to fail us. That's the unbinding that took place and freed from that to heaven above, to a body and a life that is beyond our wildest imaginations this morning. That's the promise we have in Jesus Christ. And so I would like to take a minute or two minutes here at the conclusion of this message for you to tell somebody sitting by you, either the person's name from this list, which you have in front of you, that touched your life, or somebody else that was uh, of meaning to you that you're remembering today? Because we all have them, right? In fact, we have more than two minutes worth. We could spend the rest of the day. Somebody you remember in your life, share it with a neighbor for a minute or two. Somebody who touched your life and loved you.